So I was flipping through my book, Increase Your Energy, the other day and noticed how many advanced concepts on increasing your frequency, your vibration, uh, I put into this book. But there's one thing missing. It's the bare basics of high energy. Every concept of high energy is named except for the basics because I always assume a certain level of knowledge uh, in people, but I assume too much, especially with the general dumbing down of the populace in the last few years, I realized that no, the bare basics of energy accumulation and knowledge of the free energy all around you are not known to most people. Imagine that. Imagine my surprise. So, there are natural ways of getting energy that cost you nothing. They are air, water, sunlight, food, friends or social contact, and physical movement. There are a couple more, but those are the ones I'm going to focus on here. What do you know, huh? All free energy, ways of getting free energy. So I thought it was obvious, but apparently not. There have been people in the last year spending their time locked down inside of a house, sitting in front of uh, their screens with not much fresh air, not much sunlight, not much real food, uh, processed food, made by somebody they don't even know, not much movement. And then they book a coaching with me and ask, so Fred, why is it that I lack energy? Can you teach me some awesome psycho-spiritual techniques to lift my energy state? Because you author the book Levels of Energy and increase your energy. Can you teach me some of those tools? And I'm like, well, first of all, have you actually read those books? They're full of tools. Why are you booking me? <laughs> but all kidding aside, um, how about the basics first? You know, how about having the bare basics of healthy body and mind taken care of before we go to the advanced stuff? I mean, you look a little pale. When's the last time you've been outside? Oh, the government won't let me go outside. Really? So, that's why you don't get any sun or water or fresh air? I observed this uh, group of people not too long ago entering a class advertised as breath yoga breath, yoga, and they were all wearing medical masks. Can you imagine? Can you imagine the surreal ridiculousness of it all? And I said, I scratched my head and said to myself, why don't you allow the rip off that mask and allow the natural flow of air before you go into these super advanced yoga breathing techniques, right? And, and, uh, and, uh. How about just normal oxygen? That'll make you high if you've been uh, masked for a while. People don't seem to know that a lack of oxygen decreases intelligence, decreases health, decreases well-being. It's not rocket science. Unless you're already too dumbed down to notice, it's not that complicated. Okay, fresh, good oxygen and air is a tremendous source of energy. I know why you have the highest rates of depression, mental illness and suicide in countries with poor weather conditions. I think everybody, I thought everybody knows why. It's because people stay inside, they stay pale. There's no outdoor water, there's no air, there's no sun. 
I'm going to get a little weird and extreme here, but I do that just to make a point, okay? Have you ever seen a fit and tanned mass shooter? I'm sure it exists somewhere, but most of the mass shooters that you see on TV, um, they have something in common, and it's that they're pale. Usually they also have in common that they take certain very specific pharmaceuticals. So they got this medication, they got these pharmaceuticals. Rarely do you see a mass shooter that is uh, fit and healthy and well tanned. Okay, and I say that to make a point. To make a point that as you intake sunlight energy, for example, you increase your energy. And if you increase your energy, you can't be depressed because you're full of energy. Don't you know that what we call happiness and joy is actually energy? It's the feeling of energy, of having energy. I'm not talking about race here. I'm talking about outdoor people in general. And I'm not saying you have to be tanned in order to be happy. That's not what I'm saying at all. I realize there's some people who, because they want their skin to stay young and soft, they don't want the sun. That's fine. I understand that. But sun is not the only source of energy that I've listed. You could take a walk in the woods, be protected from the sun, and still intake the oxygen provided to you by the trees. I mean, so much energy is lovingly provided by the creator of this realm. Whoever created this realm so lovingly provided everything you need, all the food you need, all the oxygen you need, all the sunlight you need, all the friends you'll ever need, so many people to choose from a body with which you can have physical movement. It's all lovingly provided by Anonymous. We don't know. Most of us don't know who provided all this so beautifully for us. I mean, just keeping your windows open in the daytime once in a while is going to help you. I know people, they spend their entire life within air-conditioned walls. And that's not healthy. And of course, they grow weak through that. That's not good. You know, even just a morning walk can raise your energy. These are the bare, bare basics, okay? I don't need to read scientific uh, case studies on the effects of sunlight. I know that there's less psychiatrists in Mexico, even though Mexico might have other issues Depression is not one of their issues, and I know it's because of the sun, okay? I know what an overdose of oxygen does to you. Get brimful with energy. You're not asking for, oh, I need some kind of a sugary thing to get my energy because you're already brimful, full of oxygen. Food is a source of energy that grows in nature. Just a hundred years ago, most people grew their own food, the majority. And nowadays, that is exactly reversed. The majority do not grow their own food. Many don't even know how if they wanted to. And we call this advanced. We call this modern. I don't know if it's all that advanced not to develop any skills yourself. And what this does is it puts food production into the hands of people you don't even know and people who do not love you. Do you not know that the production of food, food made with love by somebody you know, by your mom, by your dad, by your grandmother, by your aunt, by your grandpa, imbues the food with energy. Do people not know that? And don't people know that uh, as advanced as we are, making something in a laboratory is not as awesome as that which nature 
so lovingly provides. It's not as nutritious. Again, I don't need to be a scientist to know that. I can see it. I can see it in the results that people have in their life. Look at people's results and then look at how they live and where they get their energy from. Look at how many foods are created in laboratories, no longer grown. It's actually the majority of the supermarket. And you understand why we have an epidemic of obesity and bad health. And why so many people use medication, mostly ineffective medication. Because again, the best medication is already uh, provided in nature. And I don't want to sound like one of these organic fanatics, but there's some truth to that. There's some truth to um, the good things already being given for free. Good sleep is a source of vitality and high energy, and it's very much underestimated. So if there's anything interfering with your good sleep, remove it rather quickly. Because each day of life is a gift for you to use. I mean, good sleep is so basic. Why do I even have to mention it? Because there are literally people that have come to me for coaching, saying, uh, how can I get more success in life or more money or a better relationship or whatever? And they fail to mention they haven't slept properly in years. You know, and I, th I thought, I assumed they know the basics. That's been my problem my entire life, assuming too much. Or not assuming too much, but too strongly believing in the intelligence of people. And then later realizing I should have mentioned the basics. <laughs> I don't mean to put humans down that much, but man, it's a, it's a circus out there, okay, it's a circus out there, I mean, sleep is so basic, so um, turn off your Wi-Fi, remove phones from the bedroom, shut out the light, make sure neighbors turn down their music, or whatever it takes for you to get peaceful sleep, whatever it takes to regain and reclaim your night. Sleep is a gift of regeneration like no other. I believe it takes us to a higher realm at night and then we recharge and come back down full of energy, if it's done correctly, the way it was meant to be. I believe everybody goes to heaven every single night. People always ask me, oh, can you teach me how to travel out of body, you know, in a mysterious way? I heard you know how to travel out of body. And I just laugh at that because everybody travels out of body all the time, every night, every single one of you. And then they come to me, can you teach me? Why should I teach you something you already do? Why would I teach you something you do every night? Just because you can't remember it consciously because you're so uh, exhausted. You see, people are exhausted from life because they have all these resistances throughout the day and all these issues. And then their awareness decreases, their energy level decreases. And then they can't... Uh, they can't remember what happened at night. They don't even remember their dreams. Okay, your dreams are nothing more than travels out of body to different timelines, past, future, um, different worlds. Very simple, very straightforward. Everybody does it. Social contacts, acquaintances, and friends are a source of energy exchange. Without energy exchange, there's no energy flow. 
The energies exchanged are eye contact, talk, ideas, information, emotion, inspiration, attention, touch, and more. Involuntary aloneness, social alienation, and the utterly idiotic social distancing of the last years are harmful to your well-being. The exception to this is if you're a hermit and you're isolating yourself from society for a time, temporarily, to observe your thoughts and to meditate. That's the only exception in which isolating yourself could lead to an increase in consciousness. But other than that, it's harmful. And a lot of people have gone to focusing on their screens and staying at home and only talking to people online in order to avoid effort out of laziness. And as they avoid the effort of being with real people, there's a lot of skills they don't develop and they decline, they degenerate. So we've got a whole generation of people now who no longer know how to deal with other people and other opinions. Because what they see in the internet, if they want to, they can only read what confirms their own opinions. They're not used to sitting with somebody who might have other ideas. They're not used to feeling other people's energy field and emotion or even touch. So none of that is really good for your energy. If you want to increase your energy, have real contact. That's why as of late I've reduced my online seminar uh, thing and I'll be going back to live seminars. People need reality. Not virtual reality, but physical, real, bodily reality as messy as it is, as imperfect as it is. We do not need the so-called perfect virtual world where all of our biases are confirmed. Physical movement is vital to happiness. Again, I don't have to be a scientist or a doctor to know this, just by observation. I know that the modern sedentary lifestyle uh, is not what a human is meant to be, otherwise a human wouldn't have received arms and legs. People who know me have asked, why do you mow your own lawn, and trim your own hedges? And I answer, why would I deprive myself of fresh air, of sunlight, of movement? Why would I deprive myself of energy? They say to me, why don't you employ someone? You want me to pay someone else to get energy? It's bizarre. You see how not on the same page I am as so many people? I, I don't get it. They want me to pay someone to receive all the energy, whereas I could do it all myself and experience all the health, all the sustenance, all the nature-given beauty for myself. Not in a million years am I going to pay someone to do that. I already spend too much time in front of a screen for writing. So here's this beautiful image. Not quite sure where it's from. It's been floating around the internet for a while. I wish I would have made it because it beautifully summarizes all the basics. Sunshine, air, food. And it also shows electromagnetic energy through the feet and cosmic energy flowing in from all sides. There's no doubt that there is something, a life force that is keeping you alive. There's not a single person alive who can explain what is keeping you alive but we all know it's there. There's not a single scientist that can explain what is keeping a human alive. They act like they're all smart and they put on their white coats to look smart, but they don't know. 
They don't know the mystery of what is keeping everything flowing, moving, shining, and alive. So once you've gotten your daily dose of good sleep, good water, clean, pure water, fresh air and oxygen, sunlight, even starlight can be healthy, good food, social exchange, physical movement, then, only then, only once you've established the basics is it time to ask, are there more ways in which I can optimize my energy, increase my level of consciousness, level of energy, um, grow spiritually? Once the basics are provided for, and that's where finally my books increase your energy and levels of energy and my books on healing come in. They provide tools to further ascend, to learn even more. But I don't really recommend getting into these tools if you don't have the basics provided for, if you're leading an unhealthy life, a dumbed-down life. I hope you understand that the uh, measures that your government proposed in the last few years are the exact opposite of health and high energy, right? Staying inside, locking down, uh, injecting toxins, uh, cutting off your oxygen. Um, it's the, it's, if you're not completely dumbed down yet, you know that. You know, and unfortunately, these measures further dumb people down. They're already dumb enough to buy into it. They buy into it, they do it, and they dumb down even further to a point where I can't even explain these things to them anymore because they're so far gone. You know, uh, how do I get my energy up? Well, look at what you're doing. Why are you in front of that screen all day, locked up inside? So take a break from your screens and jump into the water outdoors, catch some rays outdoors, catch some oxygen outdoors. Do that for a couple of months and see how you feel. Try to eat some real food for a change, real food, and see how you feel. Okay, and if you live in a place uh, that's uh, horribly polluted, a city that's polluted, move out into the country. If you live in a place where it's way too hot to ever go outside, move to a cooler climate. Do what it takes. Do what it takes to truly increase your energy, starting with the basics. My name is Fred Dotson. Have a nice day.